Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining. Good evening. I'm Kirsten Barron, and I'm here representing the League of Women Voters of Bellingham and Whatcom County. Tonight, we have Punjabi and Spanish interpretation available. If you're watching via Zoom, you can use the interpreter symbol on your screen, and you can select either Spanish or Punjabi to hear the program in your preferred language. There, is also, there are also instructions in the chat to indicate how you use that function. Um, founded in 1920, the League is a nonpartisan organization with more than 700 affiliates in all 50 states. Our goals are to encourage informed and active participation in government, increase an understanding of major public policy issues, and influence public policy through education and advocacy. The League never endorses candidates or political parties. Membership is open to all people 16 and older, and of course, we invite you to join us. Tonight's forum is being broadcast on the City of Bellingham's YouTube channel and BTV. Recordings of this program are in English, Punjabi, and Spanish, and they will be available on the League of Women Voters of Bellingham Whatcom County website. And that website address is lvwbellinghamwatcom.org, all one word. This forum will be broadcast, rebroadcast on Bellingham Community Television, BTV, through Election Day, August 2. No portion of this forum may be rebroadcast in part or in full without the written permission of the League of Women Voters of Bellingham, Whatcom County. Questions for this forum have been prepared in advance by the League with input from the public. The Cascadia Daily News, the Linden Tribune, Salish Current, the Northern Light, 102.3 KMRE Community Radio are our media partners. And tonight we are hosting candidates for the 42nd Legislative District Representative Position 1 race. I'll start off by telling you about this position. The Washington State House of Representatives has 98 members. Two are elected from each of the districts in the state. During legislative sessions, the legislature is called on to enact or reject legislation affecting public policy in the state, to provide for the levy and collection of taxes and other revenue to support state government and assist in local government, and appropriate funds for these purposes. All laws are enacted only when the legislature is convened in formal session policy issues and the general operation of state and local government are under continuous review by legislators who serve on permanent and interim study committees. Washington state representatives serve two year terms and their annual salary is $57,876. So now I would like to welcome and introduce our candidates. We have candidate Alicia Rule. We have candidate Kamal Bachu. We have candidate Tasha Thompson. Welcome and again, thank you so much for joining us this evening. And I believe, yes, and their names are also on their Zoom screens, perfect. So for the viewers, here are the rules that we'll follow tonight. Each candidate makes a two minute opening statement. Then each candidate will be asked to respond to questions and each candidate will respond to the same question. They will, each candidate will have 90 seconds for their responses. And finally, candidates will have one minute to make a closing statement. Um, I'll ask candidates to start speaking in the order in which they appear on the ballot, and then we'll rotate that for the questions. The timer is gonna be displayed on the screen as well, and it, count down, it counts down the time the candidate has. The timer will be green when it begins, then it turns to yellow when there's 15 seconds, and when time is up, it turns red and there is a chime. Are there any questions regarding the rules? Great. Nope. Great. Nice and clear. Excellent. And are our time is our timer ready to start? Yes. Great. And if you just give me one second. Just want to make could sure. I could I pause for one minute, please? I'm sorry. Um, we're not hearing the Punjabi uh, translator. Manji, can you uh, can you? I 
I can hear you in the English, but when I go to the Punjabi Punjabi channel, okay, try that again. I can hear you now, right? And you're speaking in Punjabi. Can you try that? <coughs> Hello, Manji. Hello, Manji. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear us? Are you doing the interpretation? Got it. Okay, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, okay, do your best. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. All right. Um, yes, if you could all speak a little slower, um, that will help our, our translators um, oh, interpret for us. So thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Okay, you, all right. Okay, we will start with opening statements. Candidate Rule. Great, thank you. Do we have a timer? Are we ready to go? The timer should be at the top of your screen. Okay, I'm not seeing it, but I'll go anyway. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia Rule. I'm a lifelong social worker and I've been in Whatcom County for five generations. My family has. Um, I'm also a small business owner and I've had the honor of representing you in Whatcom County for the last term. And it has been a pleasure and a challenge. And um, really, I, I hope that we have the opportunity to continue working together because we're really just getting started. It is my priority to protect public safety, and that's everyone. It's also my priority to make sure that we're working well together, that mental health and public safety are working together um, in order to serve those that are most vulnerable in our community. I am also working really hard to ensure that everybody has access to good paying jobs, not just those who go to college. And it is also my priority to ensure that we protect women's right to their own healthcare decisions. I thank you for the opportunity to serve you. I consider myself as a representative, truly your voice of Whatcom County. And I work really hard to be the most bipartisan legislator in Olympia so that all of your voices can be heard um, during the time we're making big decisions that impact you in your daily lives, um, when you're making decisions about um, food on the table and uh, uh, all of the decisions we make together as we think about our children's and our grandchildren's future. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Candidate Rule. Candidate Bachu. Hello, everyone. Um, and I will greet in Punjabi also, Satri Akal. And uh, my name is Kamal. I was born and raised in India. I moved here when I was 15. I've been in Whatcom County for almost 26 years. I'm married and have four kids. We have a hobby mini farm because uh, I live on uh, 10 acres in Blaine. I believe that we need public servants, not politicians, or not a bunch of activists, uh, we need activists. <laughs> we don't need people that are only going to tow the party lines. We need people that will put bef uh, people before the parties. And that's what we need. We need someone that understands not only the mainstream community, but also the people of color that are living in our community. There are several uh, minorities living in our county and I, and I believe they are being underrepresented uh, right now. So we need a, a person who can represent everyone. And we need better paying jobs in our area and also a better housing. And uh, public safety is a huge con uh, concern of mine because my wife, she works for Blaine PD and uh, I hear all type of uh, concerns uh, from her. And also we need Edu better education system in our local public schools, uh, such as bringing more technology type programs into our schools, because we need to prepare our kids for their future. Uh, myself, I've been in the private sector and there is a huge shortage of workers in our, our sector. So my goal is as representatives to 
to bring about those type of programs and support those. And uh, that's my goal. And that's what I'm looking forward uh, to do uh, when elected. And thank you for having me here. Uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Candidate Bachu. Mm -hmm. Candidate Thompson. Thank you for this opportunity to introduce myself and have this important discussion about issues impacting the people of this district. My name is Tasha Thompson. Dykstra is my maiden name. I'm a 25 year veteran of law enforcement and currently I am working as a disaster case manager with the Wacom Long Term Recovery Group. I grew up here in Wacom County on a dairy farm just south of Linden. My father, Jake Dykstra, grew up in Holland and immigrated here with the dream of owning his own farm. My mom is a singer and a yodeling school bus driver. Together, they raised 11 of us kids. Who I am today and the skills I developed and honed during my law enforcement career were first instilled in me by my parents growing up on that farm. They taught me if I want something, I need to work for it. But out there in the middle of the night when the barn iced over, the floods came, it was not the government that saved us, but our neighbors. Whatcom County has been through one of the worst, de most devastating floods in history and their neighbors showed up. But now that the waters have receded, they need someone to be a voice for Whatcom County and Olympia, someone who will fight for them and help restore our communities, someone who will find answers to what failed and find ways to fix it. The experience and the talents I developed in my 25 years as a law enforcement officer are very applicable to the skills necessary to be successful in Olympia. Collaboration and teamwork, ability to read, interpret, and apply law and policy, ability to communicate effectively with people from all walks of life. Throughout my career, when working with a group or committee, the question was never about political affiliation, but rather what is the common goal? To find what unites rather than divides. That diversity of thought prevents tunnel vision because tunnels, no matter whether red or blue, can be negative because there's only one way in and one way out. But we need a way out. We need a way out of spiking crime rates, escalating gas prices, and house prices are completely unaffordable. It's time for change in Olympia to bring balance back to the legislature and escape the tunnel vision and give people of Whatcom County the belief their concerns are being heard and their needs are being met. And I will be that too. Thank you very much, candidate Thompson. All right, we'll start with our first question and we will start with candidate rule. How would you describe the main principles that guide you in making personal decisions and how would those principles be reflected in your political decision making? Oh, great question. Thank you. You know, I grew up, as I mentioned, in Whatcom County and Back then, the way that we were raised is with a shared value that crossed across political lines. That was that we were to work hard and look after each other, especially our most vulnerable. So I think, you know, those are really at the core of who I am as a person. And, and I think they just play out every day in my regular life, including my work life. It's really important to me that as I fulfill this role, that I'm listening first um, and, and then using what I hear, you know, not only just listening, but listening deeply and then using what I hear in order to inform decisions in Olympia on behalf of all the people who live here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, candidate Bachu. Can you repeat the question one more time, please? Sure, absolutely can. How would you describe the main principles that guide you in making personal decisions and how would those principles be reflected in your political decision-making? Okay. So what guides me to, to do the right thing, when we first moved here from India to US, my family came here with literally nothing. We had 500 bucks in our pockets. We all worked hard and made who I, who I am today by, by working hard, by, by listening to people, that was something that I developed when I worked at hospice, uh, as a hospice uh, CNA, where I, where I learned what, when people were at the end of their life, what was important to them? What are the things they have done throughout their lives? So my takeaway was, is listening to the people and also integrity. That's what we have shown throughout my campaign, even though when we were um, we faced the challenges throughout my campaign. We still kept up our integrity. 
it wasn't about throwing a mud at someone so, so we could look better. We never done that. So that's the type of a the skill that I wanted to take to Olympia that it's not about divide, it's about bringing people together. It doesn't matter what your color is, whether you're red or blue, it's about the integrity. We can sit here and talk about all types of things, but nothing will happen if our community isn't together. And that's what we need. We need to close that divide and bring people together. And that's what I'm looking to do. Thank you. Janet Thompson, would you like me to restate the question? No, I'm, I think I'm prepared. Thank you. Um, the things that guide me and make me uh, who I am today is my family. Growing up with a, a family of 11 children, you learned how to negotiate, you learned how to collaborate. And at the end of the day, you learned that no matter what, you have to come together in love because you have to live together. And so uh, my mom used to always, <laughs> the way that we would always have to get along at the end of the day is she put us in an extra large t-shirt and we'd have to sit inside the t-shirt together and hug it out basically until we figured out how to talk it out. And so I think that is something that I will bring down uh, to Olympia is the ability to uh, collaborate and work things out and work things out because it's not about us down there. It's about working things together so that we can support our communities and bring back uh, the best that we can for our communities. So uh, that is huge. My family is a big um, basis of who I am. And in addition to that hard work, uh, growing up on the farm, you always worked. If you wanted something, you had to work for it. And we need to work for our communities uh, to be the best that we can back there. They deserve the very best that, that we can bring them. And then service. I've been a public servant my entire life because I love to serve my community. And I always find to, ways to go above and beyond to do that. And I will bring all those things to Olympia with me. Thank you. So the next question, will start with candidate Bachu. The Washington State Early Childhood Education and Assistance Program serves families with, ch families with children between three and five years old who have special needs or are in foster care or receive temporary assistance for needy families grants. Some educators and parents support an expansion of this program to make it available to all families and increasing the age range. What is your opinion about this idea? I think it's a, it's a good idea that we do need to look into uh, those type of programs that will support that kids that are, are underprivileged and also with special needs. Because I would look at myself when I first came here, you know, uh, like I said, I didn't know how to speak English. I, I learned it while attending the school. So there were several programs that were in place to assist us with that. So if there are fundings that we need, then we should, should make that funding available. And we should support those type of programs. And I, I would support that fully. So thank you. Thank you. Candidate Thompson. Uh, thank you. Early childhood development is key and essential. Having worked in law enforcement and working in particular, you mentioned the foster care system. Uh, we are in desperate need of um, better foster or not better. The foster families that are out there are amazing, but we always need more. But there is um, the tendency, it makes it very difficult to become a foster parent. So I'm in support of um, expanding the program, but also making it easier while still keeping integrity and safety for the children in the foster care program. But it is very difficult to become a foster parent. So how do we collaborate together to have better legislation and better uh, ways for that, that people can become foster parents because those kids, I've been there in the middle of the night with a child trying to dial and find somewhere to, to place a child. And I've worked with CPS extensively to do that. And so expanding that service, but bringing more people into the community to support people in that time. And especially for um, many single parents having uh, availability of childcare so that they can work and provide for their families and better themselves. I think we need to always find 
ways to support families in that and develop our children uh, into healthy adults. Thank you. Great, thank you. Candidate Rule. Hi, could you please repeat the question? Yes, I can. Thank you. The Washington State Early Childhood Education and Assistance Program serves families with children between three and five years old who have special education needs, are in foster care, or receive temporary assistance for needy families grants. Some educators and parents support an expansion of this program to make it available to all families and increasing the age range. What is your opinion about this idea? Great, thank you for this very important question. As a lifelong social worker who has worked primarily with children, youth, and families, I've really enjoyed the opportunity to work on this beginning of this already. Um, I am the vice chair currently of the Children, Youth, and Families Committee, and we've been working really hard to make sure that we are not leaving any children behind. In fact, I prime sponsored a bill that included um, the expansion of the definition of homeless children, because we know that in our rural areas, homelessness doesn't look like living under a bridge for children. It often looks like living in, uh, you know, from couch to couch and moving a lot um, in, in really a home that isn't theirs or um, maybe in a, a travel trailer when it's cold at night. Um, so I very much think that this is a case of an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure and it's a really good use of our money. Um, and, uh, you know, not only is it a fiscally responsible decision to protect our children in this way, but Truly, when we invest in preventing those ACE scores, those adverse childhood experiences, we see so many of our problems, the challenges, those social problems that are so complex in adulthood that we're tackling and spending so many tax dollars on that we um, really haven't spent taxpayer dollars well. So I, I do support that expansion. Thank you. Thank you. The next question will start with candidate Thompson. <clears throat> Research suggests that young people with physical and mental health issues are helped by activities in natural surroundings. How would you contribute to creating equitable access to nature for all young people in our state? Well, this is a great question. And I think everybody does have, um, does learn better when they, can be out of just in their seats uh, in the learning environment. You learn better when you're not just hearing it and reading it, but you're actually exploring it, feeling it because uh, you know it's kinesthetic learning, it's auditory learning, and it's um, visual learning all combined into one. Um, there has been recent expansion for more outdoor education programs, and that is a great program, and I support that in our school. My daughter had outdoor education uh, this last year in the sixth grade. She had a three-day outdoor education camp at night and she came home just bubbling with so much excitement because it was imprinted on her better when you can learn outside um, and feel all the things, the, the warmth and the sun and, and feeling the, the nature in your fingers. I think the programs that we have for expanding parks and ensuring that we have parks in every district are great programs that allows people in maybe apartments to be able to go to an area where they can explore nature and learn it. Nature. And so we have great programs that do that and we need to continue to support those programs. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Rule. Thank you for asking this question. It's one that's so near and dear to my heart. I, right before this meeting, I just was out um, visiting a land trust site and it reminded me, as candidate Thompson mentioned, the visceral love that we can fall in with nature when we're out there, when we can feel that cool breeze and we can feel the warm sun. So I will continue to work to protect those programs so that kids in apartment buildings and kids with backyards can go out and understand what it means to play around and explore in the estuary. But I'm also really proud that that was my prime sponsor, Bill, to expand outdoor education. And the reason I did that, Bill, is because I know how important it is for kids to learn outside of the four walls of a classroom, primarily because it's something that I was afforded in this community when I was a kid. And I do believe, and that's why we were able to pass a bipartisan bill unanimously through the House and Senate, 
to um, expand outdoor education for every child in every part of our state so that those kids too can learn to fall in love with nature and that they can understand the connection between not only learning outside, but there are jobs and really good jobs, good paying jobs uh, with the same skill set that we really need filling. So um, I think it's a win-win all, all around. Thank you. Ken, it bought you. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> yeah, I would have to agree with Alicia and Tasha on, on both of those, <clears throat> what they just, just said. I myself, I love being outdoor and that's how I, I enjoy my days off when I'm out and about. And yes, I think it, it's a great idea to have those type of programs throughout our early, uh, early childhood development and also throughout our high schools. And I would also say we, we should make sure that if there are uh, newer developments are happening, they have parks available, e easily accessible to uh, everyone. And uh, that's how a lot of the kid, kids learn being outdoor and like the earlier comments were made saying, you know, we, we learn better when we can touch and feel things and being outdoor and uh, we can get the, the love of, of nature and experience that. So yes, I, I would totally support those type of programs. Thank you. Great, thank you. <clears throat> the next question is about infrastructure and we'll start with candidate rule. During the pandemic, we have seen the inadequacy of our state's ports to handle increased freighter traffic. What action could the state government take, if any, to solve this problem? Great questions. Uh, this is at the core of many of our problems. Um, I have had the privilege of working on a bipartisan uh, supply chain caucus um, committee. And so we are working with all stakeholders on what we can do as a state. But I think it's really, truly important to understand that this is a global problem. So um, we need to work with all of our stakeholders, including, and not, you know, it's a global problem, but also an international problem right here in our backyard. So I'm very pleased that I've had a good working relationship with both Democrats and Republicans in the legislature with the private sector, and also with our federal delegation, as well as oftentimes the Canadian delegation. Um, it is really through that kind of teamwork that, that we're able to do this kind of really tricky work that is so necessary because it's impacting our day-to-day -day lives uh, as we try to, to order the, the items that we're used to and accustomed to, to doing. The, the other thing I would say is while we're working on supply chain issues, we really do need to work to secure what we have here at home. And that means increasing manufacturing right here in Washington state, protecting our farms right here in Washington state and protecting our food supply. Um, we do both of those things at the same time. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, candidate Bachu. Can you ask the question again, please? Yes, I can. Um, during the pandemic, we have seen the inadequacy of our state's ports to handle the increased freighter traffic. What action could the state government take, if any, to help solve that problem? Yes, uh, so, so the first thing state can do, uh, matter of fact, in 42nd district that we can do, we can use our Cherry Point industrial area to, to build a port there that where we can have easily access to a lot of the goods that are coming from overseas, whether was, we're receiving or shipping stuff out. So, so we need that. And another supply chain issue that is, and we, we see it, I see it myself because I, I work in the private uh, sector, that a lot of the goods aren't coming from, from, from Southeast Asia, because that's where all the manufacturings are right now. So bringing those jobs back to the US that's something we have to look into. And also, matter of fact, we should use our Cherry Point industrial area to bring those jobs home here where we can create better paying jobs for the locals. So we have to look into that type of uh, investments that we can make here locally. And uh, hopefully we can solve these issues. Um, thank you for the question. Great, thank you. Candidate Thompson. Yes, thank you for the uh, question. And I agree with both uh, the other candidates. Uh, I'll point to candidate Batu, Batu first. 
I agree that we can explore better options for expanding our Cherry Point that would bring better um, jobs and high paying jobs to this community. And we can also explore um, what regulations maybe inhibit uh, the free market. If there are regulations uh, that would prevent us from maybe building a Cherry Point uh, port and let's find ways to uh, lessen the regulations that would expand uh, the ability for people to uh, build uh, better infrastructure. We need to look at what is getting in the way of that infrastructure, what is slowing it down, what is bottlenecking it because uh, it's not just uh, the pandemic. I think it's uh, over regulation and over legislation that has slowed down our ability to build uh, efficiently and effectively. We also have to look at uh, what is preventing uh, the traffic from getting from the ports. And I think our very extremely high diesel prices are impacting our freight trucks from being able to haul freight to the stores and it's adding costs for everybody, which is leading to our skyrocketing grocery prices. Thank you. We had a bit of a delay because of making sure the interpreter was online. Do you all have a few extra minutes to run past 535? Is that all right? Good. Okay, super. I'm I'm one more, great, thank you so much for your willingness to stay a bit. We'll do one more question and then we'll go to our closings. Um, the last question is about gun safety and we'll start with candidate Thompson. What changes, if any, to gun safety laws in Washington state, would you oppose or support or propose? At this uh, point in time, I, I have worked extensively, obviously in gun safety uh, rules. I was uh, in law enforcement for 25 years and I was actually as the Intel detective, one of my uh, jobs was for tracking firearms and um, investigating you know, people that had purchased firearms that were not allowed to uh, purchase them. And so I think that the rules that we currently have are good rules. You know, you're not allowed to buy, there is a waiting period. They've just passed the, the magazine, although I'm not in support of that 10 round magazine uh, thing, uh, rule that just passed. Um, I think that we need to remember that we need to support the people because it's the people that are hurting people with firearms. We need to have safer, more effective um, methods of supporting people who are going through mental crisis. Uh, I support having the waiting period for those that have mental health uh, concerns and do not have a CPL. And because people that have CPLs already have background checks and full background checks, so they should have access to firearms. And, you know, um, as far as uh, gun safety, I think we can all um, just come around people that are suffering and make sure that we get them the help they need and, and improve our mental health system so that we can support the people and get officers um, the, the needs that they, the, the support they need. All right, thank no, you. Great, thank you. Ken, it bought you. Yes, ma'am. So I have to agree with, um, Ms. Thompson there. So right now, Washington state has the, one of the strictest gun laws in, in, the, in the US. Uh, you have to be 21 years of age to purchase any firearms, you know, whether it's shotgun, semi-auto or, and also same thing with AR-15s, you have to be 21, whether you have, uh, also with the handguns too. And then there's a 10 day waiting period. What we need to do is improve on our, mental health like it, it was mentioned before we need to make that better and the people that are going through those crises let's get them some help first to so we can deal with that and also if you look at the previous shootings that took place most of those people had some type of a mental health issues and they were brought up on to to someone, they, whether their parents knew about them, whether the school counselors knew about them, but nothing was done. So we have to look into that, into the mental health issue first. Uh, so we have all the gun laws in place in Washington state that will prevent a lot of the bad guys from getting the firearms. It's not the, the, the people that have CPLs that are out there committing all the crimes. 
is the people who should not be able to get firearms are getting firearms. Thank you so much. Candidate Rule. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to say I'm thrilled that my colleagues here have agreed that we really need to improve the mental health system. Uh, that's one of my priorities, and I totally agree with that. But this is a question about gun safety, reasonable gun safety. And I am proud of my gun record uh, because I come from a hunting family. Every person that I know, in my, my uncles, my grandpa, my, my dad, everybody uh, that has been in my family has been a hunter. So this isn't really a question about hunting guns. This is about mass murder of children and people in public. So I'm proud of my, my record and my voting record on this. Um, I had a lot of questions when I made those decisions, but I made those decisions because what I learned is that when you limit somebody's ability to legally own a high capacity magazine gun, you truly, other states have done this, you do reduce the number of mass shootings. And that's really what we're looking at here. Um, I also think it's very important, and I can't say this enough, people, lock your guns. Um, by keeping your guns locked, you really do decrease the risk to this sort of thing happening. We can't forget that these bad guys, as they've been called, yesterday were somebody in our kids' school, and they've tipped over into a line of now being dangerous. So um, I really feel good about the, the decisions I made. I thought them through well. I think we have to protect our children and our public and each other first. Uh, and we need... Darn timer. <laughs> Thank you. The pesky chime. It's now time for us to proceed with closing statements. Yes, Candidate Bachu. So uh, I would like to ask a question to Ms. Alicia Rule. Oh, we don't uh, that, actually. We don't. We, I'm sorry, Ken. We, there oh, no are other forums that do that, but this one doesn't. I apologize. Yeah. Okay. We're going to proceed with closings now, um, and we'll again go in ballot order. You have one minute, Candidate Rule. Hi, thank you. Thank you all for electing me to be your representative. And thank you for trusting me to represent and be your voice in Olympia. I've worked hard to bring people together that are unlikely allies to solve some of the great challenges that we have in front of us today in this shared community. Um, I will work hard for you continually because I know that not everybody needs to go to college to have a good paying job. And I know that we deserve to be safe and that we're not going to leave any of our vulnerable community members behind. I know that we need to continually work to make sure that we have a mental health system and a public safety system that work together to protect our community and to protect those most vulnerable. So I thank you again for trusting me in this position and I ask for your support moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Bachu. Yes, um, what I wanted to say is what I said before, that we need people that are going to represent everyone without creating a divide in our community. We need people with common sense that had been in trenches that came from nothing and have made their self into something today. So we need people that will represent everyone, people from all side. And we need someone that who can bring jobs to our community, not just only do a lip service, because as we can look at the records uh, from the past, nothing that was said before been done. So we need someone who will fight for everyday people. And that's what I would do for for you. That's why I'm Kamal for all. Please vote. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Candidate Thompson. Oops. Again, I wanna thank the League of Women Voters for this opportunity to speak with the voters in our community. The ballots have been mailed out today, so it is important to be engaged in your community and vote. We discussed so many important things today. I would have liked to focus a little more time on crime, homelessness, and inflation, which is what I hear at the doors is a huge concern for the people in this community. I hope that the answers that I did have time to give uh, on some of the questions gave you some insight into how I will serve my community here in the district. Throughout my career, I have excelled at collaboration and teamwork to find what unites rather than what divides. As I had said earlier, diversity and thought prevents tunnel vision. Washington State has been under one party rule for over a generation, and that is a very long tunnel. It is time to escape that tunnel and get back on the right track. I will fight for a safer Whatcom County 
I will fight for a more affordable Whatcom County and I will bring balance back to Olympia. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the League of Women Voters, I want to thank all three of you candidates for participating and more importantly for your interest and willingness to run for public office and to be a public servant. Thank you very much. Um, voters, you can find more information about these candidates online at voter411.org and in your voter pamphlet, pamphlet. And yes, ballots were mailed today. Your ballot must be postmarked and mailed uh, or in the ballot, I'm sorry, in the ballot drop box before 8 p.m. on August 2nd. Please remember to sign the ballot envelope. And if mailing, we recommend that you vote early, that you mail early. So from the League of Women Voters, vote and vote early. Thank you very much for your attendance. Again, thanks to the candidates. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Thank you so much. Good night.